Guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kingfisher's Bait and Trace Clinic for today. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Um, that will just update you on any new videos that we do. Okay, so today I'm doing my favorite bait and trace for cob. Um, what we require, and I'm gonna go through it very quickly, sharp knife, some high density foam. I'm just gonna use this to make a hole, so that's neither here nor there. Mustard scissors to cut the nylon. I'm gonna show you two different options that you can do for it. If you're fishing for the bigger cob, the 80 sui is what I recommend. I'm talking those cob from 15 to 30 kilos. The 80 is ideal for it. I've got the Chinu 3 O's. I've got, again, for the smaller cob now, those 15 kilo downwards cobs, the 6 O's in the suis. So if you're targeting a smaller fish, you're gonna use a smaller hook. The principle stays the same throughout this video. Um, this here is 4x5 power swivel. It's a lovely small swivel, strong as Russia. Um, sinker clip, as you can see there. Um, yeah, it's up to you. You can use for the bigger cob, double X fluorocarbon, which is this over here. It's a soft, supple line. And that's very, very important to have a soft, supple line to get your bait to move. And of course, the more the bait moves, the more the rattle will make a noise, the more it attracts the fish. So there we go, guys. Kingfisher glass rattles, as you can see, they make a hell of a lot of noise in the high density foam, as long as it's moving. So Centro uh, sleeve, basically it's a glow in the dark sleeve, and I'll show you how we do it. Um, 90% of our cob fishing is done at night time here in KZN. So you need something to light up your bait. It's a visual attractor and it works extremely well. Okay, let's start off. What we need is, and again, it depends on the depth of the water. So there's no golden rule to this one. The longer the trace, the calmer the water. The rougher it is, the shorter we make our hook snoots and our sinker snoots, guys. So for this, I'm not going to give you an exact size or length because it varies on area and conditions. Very important. Okay. So nylon. I'm going to do the bigger trace for cob. It's easier for you guys to see. But of course, like I said before, 6 O's, generally those small little cob that we get around here, 6 O is ideal. But I'm going to do the bigger ones today. So 8 O sui. I'm going to take myself a nice long section of our double X fluorocarbon and we are attaching it using a figure of eight and again to do it over your finger around three times go back through there it is lubricate it is fluorocarbon slide down nicely pull the knot tight very important to pull the knot tight Cut off the tag in close. I'm gonna make it about 50 centimeters in length. And if you see the power swivel as it stands there, the big R goes to your leader. The small R coming down is what we attach our nylon to. You always wanna pull in a straight line, guys. So just remember that as long as the swivel is straight, your weakest point is taken out of the equation. One, two, two, three. There we go, there's your figure of eight. And again, just lubricate. Very important with fluorocarbon to lubricate. Cut it off. You can see how soft and supple it is. There it is there, okay. Sinker is always longer than your hook. So that'll come out on that arm. 
And again, figure of eight to attach. We use a lighter braking strain nylon. So I'd be using 21 kilo maxima for this. Pull tight, cut off. So there we go guys, there's our hook and our swivel attached. The arm that comes out, we are going to attach our sinker snoot to it. So we take 21 kilo Maxima Ultra Green preferably, go through the eye and we attach it with a figure of eight. Pull tight. Cut off the tear again over there as close as we can. Now remember, I'm using 28 kilo double X here. I'm using 21 kilo here. If you do get stuck, the 21 kilo should, in theory, break before the 28 kilo does. We just make it a little bit longer than our um, hook. As you can see there, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to attach my sinker clip. And the reason we use the sinker clip is for long distance casting, because we can attach our bait to the actual trace. Also, it's easy to change sinkers. If you're fishing in an area that's very sandy, you can use a cone sinker. If you go to a rocky area, you can start using a different sinker. You just unclip it, change it. Um, if you're fishing in a rougher area, you can put your grapnel on. So it basically works on a simple system that it goes in the eye of the sinker and pulls down. So there it is there, like that. Okay, if I want to take it off and change the sinker, different weights, perhaps I want to throw further. Very, very important sinker clip, guys. Okay, so there is a cob trace pretty much made as far as setting up everything goes. Okay, so now I've finished with that, I've finished with this. I'm going to take my high density foam. It's pretty much surfboard foam. It's hard, it floats very well. Um, and the reason we use it, because of the density of it, it actually creates a much louder noise when we've got our rattle inside it. I've already pre-done one. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. There it is there. I'm then gonna take my glass rattle. And you can't hear it. The minute you stick it into the actual foam and push it in, starts creating a much louder noise. It amplifies the actual rattles inside the actual foam. To do the actual foam, what we do is we take some high density foam, cut it at a slight angle. So I'm cutting it pretty much tapered from one side to the other side, higher end. I'm then gonna cut off to form a little shape like that. So I'll cut it off nicely. Then I'm going to taper it down. So all I've done is cut off the hard edges on each side. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole in it. The easiest way to do it is use a nail, a soldering iron. I'm just going to use a pair of round nose pliers. So what we do is we take the point and we insert it into the foam like that. So it looks like that. Then we take our rattle and put our rattle inside it and you're good to go. So there it is there, it's already done. Shape, formed the way I like it. And you can hear the rattle inside it, guys. Okay, we're now gonna attach the foam to our hook. And we're gonna use our Kingfisher latex cotton. It doesn't matter which cotton you use, I just prefer a thick one because it just goes on a lot harder and quicker for us. And I need a lot less of it, but thick is good. Just tie it around the hook a couple of times and then go back over the top and work our way towards the back. Okay. Once I've got that far, 
What I do is I take a uh, centro glow sleeve and we just cut it. So just to give you an idea, the long thin one and you've got a thick part to it. I just cut it in half like that. I can either use that part and insert it or I can use that part. Okay, so I've just split the big part into two pieces. Open it up a little bit and stick it pretty much over the eye of the actual hook. And then what I do is I carry on tying my foam to the hook. Obviously going over that centro glow sleeve over there. Okay, the reason for that is later on I'm going to show you how well that stuff actually glows in the dark. It's an attractor, it works extremely well for cob. You don't want it to be too bright. You can use a um, glow bead as well, but I just find the glow beads die too quickly. Um, the Centro actually lasts a hell of a lot longer when you're fishing at night time, as far as the visual lighting of it goes. Okay, to finish it off, all we do is we just do these little loops over it. Yes. So, what we do, that part of it, while we're fishing at night time, obviously you leave it down on your bait box lid, and you shine your headlamp on it because you're working, that's enough charge to charge that uh, glow sleeve up. Okay. Um, let me just grab a chocker hammer and I won't be two seconds. So I've got our lovely trace all made up over here, ready to go. Chocker. Flipping awesome looking round chocker. Mm. I could almost eat this myself, I'm telling you now. Okay. Sharp knife, very important for working with chocker. Um, precision cuts are always important. There we go. What we do is we open it up. All I've done is cut along the top of the actual chocker. So you will see that's basically what I'm cutting along. Open him up nicely. Going to take the head out. Like so. Just put that down somewhere. I'm then going to take the wings off and the skin at the same time. Lovely white meat. I'm then going to take, and this is the ink sack. I'm just going to take two, two other parts off here quickly. Take that away, take that out. I've got the ink sack here and I've got these two little red pieces which I'm led to believe is a male part of the uh, chocker. I'm not sure, I'm not a, a fish fundi, a chocker fundi. But I get so excited when I see those two little red parts there. And I'm actually just gonna take them apart very delicately without damaging them. If I squeeze too hard, sometimes they actually pop and I don't want that to happen. Okay. Keep an ink sack. Cut that off. Okay. So very simply, guys, <clears throat> what I've got is I've got the ink sack over there. I've got these two little red bits which I'm going to use as eyes. I've got my chocker with the skin side down. So in other words, that's the skin part of it. This is the fleshy inside part of it. Take a sharp knife and again, like I said before, I'm making a trace for those bigger cob and a bait for those bigger cob. So, nice big juicy piece. That is the first cut. That's the tentacle part that I like. 
and then take another section about that thick but I only want it to be the size of the actual flotation so not bigger than that there there we go so there's our two cuts that we use nice big fleshy part and of course the thin tentacle part over here so if you have a look here that's pretty much how I'm going to tie it so to make the tentacles the tentacles are going to be that length so there we go there's the tentacles done this part is what I'm going to wrap over the chocker I'm going to hit it until it's as soft as can be this is where I said it gets messy so just bear with me Okay, that was done with the thick side. Now we go on to the thin side, which is going to spread everything out. Okay, why we use two different um, cutting edges on a chock hammer is that the thick side breaks down the skin. The thin side actually spreads all the, the juices out in it. Okay. To tie it, I use thin latex cotton. Very important that you use a thin one. What we're gonna do, just take the thick side of the chalk hammer. I'm not gonna use the, the, the very fine part of it, the thick one. The reason we do that is so that the latex actually cuts into it when we've actually attached our chocker. I'm not doing the actual feeler part of it. At the bottom of where the V is, is where I'm gonna stick my Ato Sui through. Over the actual trace, like that. Okay, simple guys. I'll then take my thin latex cotton and just lightly wrap it up and remembering to go behind the hook because what that does is actually holds the tentacles away instead of dropping over the hook but sometimes when you actually pull and you shake what happens is the actual hook goes into the actual chocker so we don't want to do that so we tie up behind it keeping it away just a little trick there and we go all the way to the end over there when I get there, I'll stop. I then pick up my chocker. <clears throat> like that. And it's almost translucent now. You can almost see right through it. <clears throat> we then place it over and around the chocker. Oh, my actual foam. Work the way down to the bottom, like that. And not a lot of chocolate, uh, not a lot of latex on it, guys. You don't have to use a lot at all, because you've really tied the base on. The more cotton I put on, the more I actually restrict the movement and the smell of the bait from ex from coming out, from being excreted. So there we go. We can just finishing it off. that okay so now I've tied it up and you can feel it's very very oily mm. when that hits the water it's gonna be like a plume of little particles going off into the water and you'll find that the fish get attracted to it a lot quicker now let's start off with these two little red things that I took off Open them up nicely. They almost look like little kidneys. It's the only way I can explain them to you. 
Okay, so there they are there. I'll put one on the left, and I'm going to put one on the right. So what you do is just lightly go over them. You don't want to go too hard because then you're going to burst them. So three or four times around it. On the left hand side, then on the right hand side. I've got one of each of them. One, two, three, four, five times. And then again, I just lock it off again with those half hitches that we do. Okay. So that's pretty much our chocker bait for catching those bigger, bigger cob. So you got what appears to be eyes on the side, darker contrast to the white that glows, and of course you can hear the rattles inside them. And in the water, that noise of the rattle will be amplified. But here's the trick. I'm going to show you a little trick quickly. A lot of times when fishing for those bigger fish, you get the small little cob bite, those little three to five kilo cob, those little like snatch cob that might come around. If you find that you're getting the smaller bites, all you do is cut off your hook snoot, take one of these little ring chinus. That's a 3-0 ring chinu. Slide it on the hook. Like so. And just tie it back up. One, two, three times. Sometimes the cob feed very shyly where they just, they're not really in a feeding mood. They'll mouth it and drop it, mouth it and drop it. That's when this little hook comes into play. So now, to attach that hook to our bait, all we do is take the hook, the little chinu, and at the back, just go slide straight through the, the bait. And what you're gonna do, it doesn't go deep into the skin. It just sits on the back of it like that. It's as simple as that. Now again, like I said, if you wanna throw far, you wanna get to that far bank, We just attach our sinker clip. You can throw it, that will go up. When you throw in the air, hits the water, that bait's gonna come off. This part here is now gonna float up. And of course, you, when you pull it, shake your rod, you pull it down, it shakes, it comes back up, shakes, comes back up, shakes. And of course, the cob will come along. Oops, got it. There we go, guys. That's one of my favorite baits for catching cob in the Transcar, on our beaches, Mapalan, Vidal, wherever it is that you might go to. But that is a brilliant bait for catching those bigger cob. Obviously, smaller cob, you'll go into the smaller hooks, smaller bait, together, areas like that. Guys, there we go. If you want to add a bit of color to it and a little bit more flavor during the daytime, you'll take the chocker ink sack over there and beat that in. It adds more flavor, more scent, more color in the water. Very, very good uh, thing to do. Never throw that ink sack away. Um, Competition-wise, it's must probably one of the best parts of the actual chocker that you can use. Okay, so there we go, guys. This is just under normal light. I haven't shone it up or anything like that. The centro sleeve, basically you can see how it actually starts glowing just from the normal light while I did the bait clinic. Obviously when you're baiting up and you're at your bait box at night, your headlamp charges this um, sleeve up automatically. So there's your visual. You've got this nice light. Works extremely well in dirty water as well as nighttime or overcast conditions. Okay, here's just another option that you can do for your chocker baits for daytime fishing. Again, that's the ink sack of our chocker and what we do is we put it on top but before we do that we just take our chocker hammer the very fine side of it and we just break it up ever so slightly
take our trusty knife, go underneath it, we lay that on top like so. Take our thin latex cotton. And that is pretty much all done. Okay. So all we've done is just laid the ink sac on top. Take your finger and you can just rub it into the, the chocker like that. Now what's going to happen is the minute it hits the water and goes down, this ink sac is going to give that big plume of uh, ink in the water. So it looks like that squid is giving off a little bit of a burst of ink. It also creates a bit more of attraction in the water and of course you've got your contrast, your black on your white which are, as you know from bass fishing it always helps. So it's just an added little thing that you can do or you can just hit the chocker into the bait. Guys, extra smell, extra flavour, extra colour. It is fun to play with. Cob fishing is a jaw. Enjoy guys. <laughs>